A hurdle for shipping along the lower Mississippi River is being removed, and it is anticipated to provide benefits for businesses all along the aquatic superhighway. So we estimate that farmers could generate an additional $461 million every year, not because supply has changed, not because demand has changed, but just simply because the supply chain, our transportation system, is more economical and more efficient. The final stretch of the Mississippi River before it meets the Gulf of Mexico is home to some of the most important ports in North America. Producers of a vast array of commodities from across the country use the Mississippi River as an entry point to ship their products worldwide. This month, the state of Louisiana and the Army Corps of Engineers teamed up to deepen the shipping channel from 45 to 50 feet, making way for bigger ships and more commerce. And we are connected to every state along the Mississippi River. And the 256 miles that this dredging will work, um, I think will really um, create an additional million plus dollars per vessel in a sense of capacity because they can now go deeper, which means they can carry more, which means they can sell more for the same shipping cost of that one vessel. The Mississippi River Ship Channel Dredging Project comes with a price tag of just over $270 million. A majority of the bill will be paid with federal funds, but the state of Louisiana and a number of agricultural groups are sharing some of the costs. The Army Corps of Engineers calculates the work will pay for itself in three years. The project is expected to return $7.20 for every dollar spent constructing and maintaining the channel. Mike Steenhook, executive director of the Soy Transportation Coalition, says the deeper channel will have far-reaching benefits for the rest of the country. And our analysis highlighted that you can, you'll be able to put an additional 500,000 bushels of soybeans per vessel. You often find in, in some of these ocean vessels 2.4 million bushels of soybeans uh, per vessel. This can easily push it up to 2.9 million bushels of soybeans by just going an additional five feet. And so you're just improving the economics of the supply chain. We estimate that's going to be a 13 cent per bushel savings. The project is expected to benefit the ports of Baton Rouge, Plaquemine, New Orleans, and the Port of South Louisiana by providing deep draft access to larger vessels currently moving through the newly expanded Panama Canal. Paul Oakwin, executive director of the Port of South Louisiana, spoke to Market to Market in the spring of 2017 about the need for a deeper shipping channel. We become uncompetitive and unreliable, and that goes, that hurts our farmers. And when you become uncompetitive, unreliable, they'll go someplace else. These countries that are buying our grain will find another place to buy it that's more reliable and more competitive. For products headed to overseas markets, a shallow channel was forcing some cargo vessels to leave the port at less than full capacity. According to Oakland, the smaller loads are costing shippers millions of dollars, depending on how much cargo has to be left on the dock. For ships coming into port, some cargo can be delayed due to the depth of the water in the channel. Heavier loads have to wait until it's safe to allow ships to navigate upriver. Now, what happens when the ship's coming in fully loaded at, at 45 feet? And there's a 40 foot restriction. It's got to stay outside for, for a number of days until the restriction is lifted and it can come in. We've had a ship that stayed outside the Mississippi River for 42 days at $25,000 a day. With the dredging project underway, Oakwin is pleased his three year old prediction for attracting new businesses to the area has come true. We have 17 new industries that have committed to coming into the Port District, and they will spend $23.2 billion, billion dollars building these new industries, which will be utilizing the river to import and export their product. From the mouth of the Mississippi River, the project will work its way north past New Orleans and stop at the Port of Baton Rouge. Along the way, Material pulled from the bottom of the channel will be used to help build up shorelines and restore wetlands. The Coastal Protection and Restoration Authority is advising the Army Corps of Engineers 
and the Louisiana Department of Transportation and Development on the best locations for additional material to be placed along the Pelican State's coastline. It passes through a very fragile environment that is coastal Louisiana that uh, many folks are aware um, has been losing land at a tremendous rate. It's really a, um, a tragedy uh, and a catastrophe of national significance. That's, nonetheless, that environment protects that transportation system through which it travels. Uh, and without our coastal wetlands, without our coastal ecosystem protecting that transportation system, uh, it would be obviously a tremendous blow to, to the state, to the nation's uh, economy. Haas estimates the project could produce enough material to restore 15,000 acres of coastal wetlands. Or when we have a situation where we're dredging a lot of sediments, which of course would be the case in a Mississippi River deepening project, we want to be able to capitalize on that and use those to help build coastal wetlands that are good for the ecosystem, good for our environment, but again, in turn, good for our economy as they help protect that transportation system. You don't want to grab a shark by the tail because that shark won't eat, that shark won't do anything, and it has to keep moving to do that. The lifeblood of our uh, agricultural economy and our manufacturing and petrochemical world is about moving that product from one stage to the next, so each of those stages can compoundly add value. So um, I, I will tell you, we're all connected. For Market to Market, I'm John Torpy.